Good morning, everybody. I am coming to you from downtown Nicosia, Cyprus, the capital of Cyprus. And it is a hot, sunny day here. Good weather in Cyprus. And I thought we would get to some news stories that we can talk about. And it's very quiet here. Not many cars on the streets. Not many people on the streets. Very, very quiet here in Nicosia. That's all right. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of the news that's going on. We're going to talk again about Mariupol and another attempt to, to get whatever is in that uh, Azov-style factory out. This time, they didn't try it with helicopters. They tried it with a dry cargo ship to, uh, to get that ship into a port in Mariupol, I imagine, and get, the, uh, and get who, who's ever in there out of there. So I'll talk about that story because, man, whatever is in Mariupol or whoever is in Mariupol, boy, do they want those people out bad. So I'll get to that. We'll talk about uh, Sweden as well, which is now following Finland's lead for NATO. And uh, what else should we talk about? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, von der Leyen has, has raised uh, 11 billion for Ukraine. We'll, we'll get to that as well. We'll get to the scam that, that the EU is putting together for Ukraine. And uh, we'll start things off, though. Let's start things off before we get to Mariupol and uh, another evacuation, a failed evacuation. Let's talk about uh, Boris Johnson and his trip to uh, Kiev. <laughs> I, you know, the last video I did, I think the video I did yesterday, I, uh, when I was walking to the Acropolis, I talked about how, you know, Borrell and Van der Leyen we're making uh, trips to Kiev and Burrell made a statement and he said, you know, Kiev, uh, Ukraine is not under, under uh, invasion, occupation. Uh, Kiev is fine. Everybody come here. <laughs> I mean, that was like Burrell's statement, kind of. Um, I'm, uh, I'm paraphrasing and embellishing it a little bit. But his statement was pretty much like, yeah, everyone can come here and no problem. And sure enough, Boris Johnson took him up on that offer. So Boris Johnson yesterday was uh, was in Kiev, and uh, he made some statements. Let me let me pull out the statements that he made. I mean, everyone's going to Kiev. I wonder if Biden's going to go, or if he's going to send cackling Kamala to uh, to visit Zelensky. So yeah, Boris Johnson was in Kiev. Uh, it was an unannounced visit, so it was a surprise visit. And uh, Cyprus has the orange trees too. It's a Mediterranean thing, I guess. <laughs> um, and this is what Boris said. Boris said, Today I met my friend President Zelensky in Kiev as a show of unwavering support for the people of Ukraine. We're setting out a new package of financial and military aid, which is a testament of our commitment to his country's struggle against Russia's barbaric campaign. So here's what uh, 10 Downing Street is going to be given Kiev. They are going to supply Zelensky with 120 armored vehicles, new anti-ship si missile systems, and uh, military equipment, in addition to all of that, worth 100 million pounds. Yeah. 800 NLAW anti-tank missiles and high-tech loitering munitions, commonly known as suicide drones. So that's what he's going to be providing Zelensky. That's what the, uh, the UK taxpayers are going to be providing Zelensky. The clown puppet leader, <laughs> Zelensky, Elensky. Zelensky, you see? Elensky, Elensky. Everyone has to remember, I say Elensky because um, Zelensky canceled the Z. And so it's Elensky. This comes after uh, Foreign Minister Truss said, that uh, NATO is going to start offloading all of their old weapons to, uh, to Ukraine, and then they're going to start buying new ones from, uh, from the U.S. And so sure enough, Boris hops on a plane, goes to Kiev, and uh, he, he, uh, he outlines what he's going to give to uh, Ukraine. Everyone is, everyone's going in and out of Kiev. Isn't, <laughs> it's really, really odd, I find it. On the one hand, we're hearing that, that Russia is, is uh, 
surrounding Kiev and and they're occupying the country and, and all of these things are going on and uh, Zelensky's under siege and Zelensky's hiding out and then you see Zelensky just hanging out and meeting Burrell and van der Leyen and Boris Johnson there's a fountain there so you may hear some noise so it's very odd to, uh, to see all these people moving in and out of Kiev. The Russians are letting them move in and out of Kiev too. So, I mean, the Russians are just kind of, it seems like they've left the entire West kind of open. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, Sweden, Sweden is now saying that if Finland gets into NATO, they're gonna go the NATO route. And uh, the Sweden Democrat leader, he uh, made a statement, uh, Jimmy Akison, he told Swedish newspapers, a Swedish newspaper actually, Svenska Dangbladet, he actually told them that he's considering a change of stance on NATO membership in light of Russia's attack on Ukraine. And uh, Akison's an influential figure in Sweden. He's in opposition, he's in the opposition but uh, he's, uh, he's warming up to, the, uh, to joining NATO. Here's his uh, statement. He said, Akison said, uh, if Finland applies, then my ambition is to go to the party council with a request that we change our mind. What's changed now is that Finland is very clearly moving towards a NATO membership, and there are many indications that this may happen in the near future. That and the fact Ukraine, which is not a NATO member, is completely alone, has made me turn. So it looks like Akison was against NATO membership. And now because Finland is going to go the route of NATO, Sweden, his, his party, the opposition party, is going to change their mind and they're going to uh, push for NATO membership as well. I think we, we, we talked about this, didn't we? We said this on the Duran and, and on this channel. We said that Finland and uh, Sweden are going to, uh, to go into NATO, and that's going to be the win for NATO. It's going to be a win for NATO. NATO is also, by the way, this is an interesting story. Stoltenberg um, gave some statements yesterday, and he said that NATO is now um, targeting China. They are, his statements were something along the lines of, because China continues to support Russia, NATO has to prepare for an eventual conflict with China. And uh, he's now liaising with, with Australia, South Korea, and, and other partners in, uh, in the region to create, I guess, kind of like a NATO Asia, a NATO Pacific. And it looks like they're going to create something, some sort of uh, alliance, like, like a loose type of alliance where they're going to start um, going after China. We're heading towards a big smash. I mean, we are heading towards a big, big smash. It's crazy. N NATO, you know, NATO is, uh, it has to find reasons to exist. And it's found some good reasons, Russia and China. And so they're ramping up. They're ramping up in Europe and they're gonna ramp up in, uh, in the Pacific, in the South Pacific for a really, really big conflict. Stoltenberg also said he's moving another 40,000 troops to the front lines of, uh, of NATO's eastern border, which would make it Russia's western border. So they're going to start putting troops up there as well. I mean, where do you think all of this is heading? If, if, I mean, I, I'm just looking at this and I'm saying this is, yeah, we're, we're, we're heading towards, towards conflict. I hope not. I hope I'm wrong. But all of this escalation is is happening for a reason. And it's not for, for any geopolitical or diplomatic or containment reasons. It can't be for any diplomatic reasons. I mean, Burrell came out with a statement yesterday and this was Burrell's statement. This is Joseph Burrell, the chief uh, diplomat, the foreign minister of the European Union. This guy should be seeking diplomacy and compromise. The statement he made yesterday was after he went to Kiev. He said that the only way to, uh, to move forward is via war. He says we have to arm Kiev with as many weapons as we can, and the only solution is a military solution. Literally, that was his statement. 
The only solution is a military solution. That's the chief diplomat for um, for the European Union. And you're telling me we're not going to head into some sort of conflict? No, no chance. We're, we're, we're heading towards a smash, a smash up. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe this is just another way for them to to make a boatload of money from the military industrial complex. Hopefully that's it. And hopefully we don't end up going into conflict. But uh, interesting statements from Burrell. Let's talk about, um, before we get to Mariupol, let's talk about one more story. And uh, oh no, let me leave that story for Clown World. Let me leave the uh, Ursula van der Leyen's charity for Clown World. Okay, let's leave that for Clown World. Let's talk about Mariupol. Mariupol. So they had another attempt to, to get whatever's in there out of there. The, uh, the Alensky regime. And this is an interesting way. They, it seems like they've ditched the helicopter method. And now they're trying to use ships to evacuate whoever's stuck in the steel factory. And there, there's got to be a lot of NATO soldiers there. Or very VIP NATO people stuck there. There has to be because they are trying desperately to get whatever's in there out. So, look, here's what happened. Here's how, how they tried to get these people out. On, uh, on the 8th of April, on the 8th of April, they made another attempt to evacuate these VIP people from uh, the steel factory. It was an unsuccessful attempt. The, uh, let's see here, let me find it. At 2238 Moscow time, 30 kilometers southeast east of Mariupol, a dry cargo ship under assigned to the Maltese port of Valletta was sailing in a caravan of ships from the Gulf of Tagarog to the Kerch Strait. This is at nighttime. And uh, the dry cargo ship, so it's sailing with a bunch of ships at nighttime, right? This is an incredible story. I'm stunned in a caravan of ships. So there's, so you have a caravan of ships and suddenly the one ship changed its course. It broke from the caravan and attempted to break through the Mariupol seaport, blocked from the sea by the Black Sea fleet. As I've said, the Russians control the ports. So <laughs> this is, God, it's incredible. The Ukrainian dry cargo ship did not respond to Russian border guards' demands to contact them through the international channel and continued heading in the direction of the Mariupol port. Warning artillery firing by warning artillery fired by two border patrol ships along the vessel's course did not cause the dry cargo ship to change course or slow down. While heading towards Mariupol port, the ship was engaged in radio communication, transmitting the messages, I am maniac, coming for you. I can't believe this. The ship's messages were, I am maniac coming for you. At the same time, signal fires were observed on the shore. To block the movement of the intruder vessel from 1053 to 1130, the Black Sea Fleet and the Border Patrol ships opened artillery fire on the dry cargo ship. A direct hit caused a fire in the stern of the ship. The Ukrainian dry cargo ship then went adrift. The crew got in touch with the border ships with a request to cease fire and confirmed their readiness to comply with all demands of the Russian sailors. No crew members on the ship were injured. The fire was extinguished. And that's that. After being inspected, the Ukrainian Apache ship and its crew were convoyed to the Yeyesk port. Yesk port. What a story. I am maniac and I am coming for you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. This thing is getting crazy. It is getting ridiculous. It seems like a wild story. I don't know if I buy it. I, I guess it's true. I mean, I don't know. I know that they're trying. I know that uh, Macron did call Erdogan and he was looking for Erdogan to help evacuate whatever's in the steel factory via boat. And uh, I don't know what Erdogan said. I guess Erdogan wasn't too, too keen on it, but uh, 
What a story that is. A ship, a caravan of ships, and one breaks off and it starts heading towards the port. What, what, what was that ship thinking it was going to do? Just kind of land on the port, go into the steel factory, and get whoever it was in there out? Uh, it sounds like a bit of a crazy story. I don't know if I believe it. But uh, anyway, that's uh, those are the reports that we're getting. So there, there's no doubt that... Uh, that something's in that steel factory, and I, I, I hope we find out. I really, really hope we find out what's in there. Oh, boy. One sec. Ah, all right. <laughs> Putting on the backpack. Gets hard sometimes. Let's do a clown world, and we'll wrap up the video. And uh, it's kind of a clown world. It's Ursula van der Leyen, and she has raised 11 billion euros I'm oh, sorry, $11 billion, 10.1 billion euros. That's a billion with a B for Ukrainian refugees. European Commission President Ursula van der Leyen announced on Saturday that she has raised 10.1 billion for refugee aid. 9.9 .9 billion was pledged by European leaders and their supporters. The European Bank for reconstruction and development has promised an additional 1.1 billion. This was organized by van der Leyen, Polish President Duda, Canadian PM Justin Trudeau, of course, and the NGO Global Citizen Streaming Online from Warsaw. It was an event on Saturday that took place in Warsaw, a streaming online event from Warsaw. And uh, the event... I'm trying to see, did the event happen or is it going to happen? Let me see. It's, I'm a little confused if it happened or not. I can't see. Anyway, it's either going to happen, this event, or it happened. And it's going to be an event with musical performances in support of Ukrainian temporary migrants. Among the participants are, are you guys ready? You two, Bono, of course, <laughs> of course, Millie Cyrus, Madonna, Pearl Jam, Billie Eilish, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Stevie Wonder, Ozzy Osbourne, and Celine Dion. Ukrainian President Zelensky weighed in on the proceedings in a video calling, in a video calling on musicians, actors, athletes, businessmen, politicians, and everybody who wants to join the movement and stand up for Ukraine to participate. Zelensky thanked van der Leyen and said that Ukrainian courage has already united the world, has already united the whole democratic world. Before, um, before Zelensky then asked for, for more sanctions on Russia and more sanctions on oil companies. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading this as I'm walking. And <laughs> Zelensky said, join us, join for humanity to win. <laughs> this is cloud world, man. <laughs> 11 billion dollars <laughs> the european union is going to be giving 10 billion dollars to this clown eu money eu freaking money and they're going to have a concert or they've had a concert i have to look it up i don't know let me know in the comments if you know if they had this video concert from warsaw u2 pearl jam madonna red hot chili peppers ozzy osbourne celine dion and then Zelensky is sitting there asking for more sanctions on Russian banks and oil companies. <laughs> give me weapons, give me sanctions. Weapons, sanctions, sanctions, weapons. Are we getting scammed? Is this like another BLM type of scam that's going on? You know, just a lot of money going into, into some sort of fund that supposedly is going to be given to, to refugees, but we know it's not going to be given to refugees, just like the BLM scam worked. And uh, one of the BLM members bought like eight homes or something like that. Six homes. That's not an exaggeration. We're getting scammed. The military industrial complex is, is just making a ton of money. They're scamming us. The EU is scamming us. And NATO has found a new reason to exist and they're scamming us. But they're all pushing us to war because Russia's dead serious on their demands. These clowns are pushing us to war while they're pocketing all the proceeds. Unbelievable. Unfreaking. 
unbelievable. We're letting a, a billionaire clown actor who wears high heels lead us to World War III while his patrons and his puppeteers are becoming fabulously wealthy. That's the scenario. That's what's going on right now. And people are actually buying into all of this. Oh boy. All right. I'll end it there. That was a, that's some clown world. That's a, that's an $11 billion clown world right there. Ursula van der Leyen, the queen of clowns. All right, everybody. That's the video. The Duran.locals.com. Check out Alexander's channel where he's doing all kinds of great analysis, real serious analysis, no, no clown world stuff from Alexander's channel. And uh, the Durant, we've got great videos going up daily. And uh, oh, one last bit of news, um, it's official. Uh, Imran Khan has uh, lost the no confidence vote and the regime change is successful. So the regime change worked out for Pakistan and uh, yeah, the globalists won this one. They they put a W in the uh, in the uh, win loss column. So uh, Imran Khan is gone, and Pakistan is going to be moving to to the uh, globalist side of things. So anyway, I thought I would throw that in there. Take care, everybody.